On this episode, we chat with Chris Larkin about his website, ThaiCitizenship.com. So if you like living in Thailand and want to learn a bit more about staying here long term, you'll love this episode of the Bangkok Podcast. Sawati crap, you're listening to the Bangkok Podcast. My name is Greg Jorgensen, a Canadian who came to Thailand in 2001 with a plan to eventually leave and head to Bali. And Ed, guess where I've never been? Um, I'm going to go Bali. You're right. Yeah, you win. <laughs> All right. And I'm Ed Knuth, an American who came to Thailand on a one-year teaching contract 20 years ago, fell in love with correctly predicting that the Thai government would not do something that they had promised to do. So I never left. That's like the easiest fortune telling job ever. <laughs> yeah, it's great. I love it. I'm always I right. It. I admit occasionally I'm wrong. But if you just go with, if, if you just go with, I don't think they're really going to do that. You've, you've, got, you've got like an 80 or 90% chance of succeeding. All right. Before we start, a huge thanks to all of our patrons who support the show. Patrons got a bunch of cool stuff, including our ad-free regular show a day early, behind-the-scenes photos and videos of our interviews, discounts on swag, which you can find on our website, and various other things that aren't available to regular listeners. But best of all, patrons get an unscripted, uncensored bonus episode every week where we riff on current events and random topics. Uh, we just finished recording this week's bonus show, and we chatted about the reopening of bars selling booze, which is a big deal, how a Mexican beauty queen on her way to Thailand got in trouble for a salacious photo, and how the Canadian embassy is going to solve Thailand's lack of English language skills, at least according to the education minister, who, as of today, is in prison, which we also talk about. To become a patron, head to bangkokpodcast.com forward slash support. This country is bananas, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we like it so much. That's right. All right. Well, before we jump into it, uh, I want to give everyone a quick update. Now, over the past year or so, we've gotten messages on and off from people all over the world saying that when they try to access our website on mobile, um, they get a warning or a redirection to some crappy gambling site or some phishing site or something stupid like that. Wow, that's weird. Yeah, it sucks, man. And debugging websites is not my thing. So I've, I've, I, over the over the year, I've contacted the website host, I've contacted the domain host and the theme developer, and 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 looked into it myself. I'm not a wizard when it comes to this stuff, but I kind of know my way around a website. Um, and no one could figure out what went wrong. So. Um, finally, I uh, reached out to someone that I want to give a shout out to. I want to give a shout out to our buddy Kuhn, Kuhn, Kuhn. Sorry, man. I don't know how you say it. I've never actually talked to him. I've only, you know, talked to him online, which is no substitute for actually speaking in person, but it's K-O-E-N. Right, right. Yeah. And anyway, uh, Kuhn is a, is a, is a website developer and his website is K-O-E-N-V-A-N-D-I-E-R-E-N.com, Kuhnvandieren.com. And, uh, he took a look into it and he sort of, uh, gave me some insight into what to do and some names to contact. And we managed to get a security expert to look at the site. So fingers crossed, our website should, should be virus free now. So all right, that's yeah. a, it's about time, even though I didn't really even know there was a problem. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for judging me, Ed. Thanks for all your hard work. <laughs> but it's a pain in the ass, man, when your website gets infected, because like it's, it's out of most people's ability to fix yeah, I think that, you know, when you and I were talking about it, I, I was just like, wow, this is just, this is one of those things like, you know, your car is broken. And if you don't know how a car works, you just have to just take it in and be like, okay, whatever, whatever you say, I need a new that thing. <laughs> yeah, new flux capacitor goes right there behind yeah. the seat. But uh, yeah, <laughs> thanks, right. thanks to Cohen for his help. And uh, yeah, it wasn't a, it wasn't a major infection. It was just some like stupid little redirect thing, but, and, and it didn't happen all the time, but apparently now it's gone. However, if you see it, then, uh, you know, let us know. And let us, can, at least let us know. Yeah. Let us know. Right. Yeah. We can uh, shake our fist to this guy and hope it solves itself. <laughs> all right. Well, on this episode, we chat with a fellow by the name of Chris Larkin. Now, Chris is half Thai and half Australian, and he runs a very useful website called ThaiCitizenship.com. Now, when I first heard about the site, I dismissed it, rationalizing that any random expat can buy a URL and set up a website to earn a few a few coins from Google AdSense or something, you know. Right. But uh, wouldn't you know it, I checked it out, and Chris has not only built a super legit 
resource with a ton of really good info on getting citizenship as well as permanent residency and other bits and bobs of information around those things. But he has also worked on many, many projects inside and adjacent to a number of big Thai government organizations. So he really knows the ins and outs of how these things work, which is why the site is such a great resource. So uh, as someone who has been here for a very long time and might be looking towards something like this eventually, uh, I asked him to come on the show and talk about what he does and what he knows. And uh, yeah, here's my conversation with our buddy Chris Larkin. All right, Chris Larkin. Am I saying that right, Chris Larkin? You are saying it very well in a North American accent, but very, very well. <laughs> Welcome to the Bangkok podcast, man. Thanks Thank for you. coming down. Thank you. Now, uh, this is going to be a very, very interesting discussion. And to be honest with our listeners, we don't we don't have a script. We don't have a lot of bullet points. I just want to pick your brain. And uh, it's a very interesting topic that we get a lot of questions about, but we are we are not qualified to to answer them. That being said, at the beginning of this show, let me state clearly that you are not a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer. Nothing we talk about on the show should be taken as legal advice. This is just our experiences and our, you know, living in Thailand for The results of 20 years of living and working in Thailand. Exactly, exactly. If you really want to get legal advice, contact a lawyer. Of course. Don't send me an email. So, Chris, you run the website ThaiCitizenship.com. I do. I do. And when uh, I first heard about it, I thought, oh, great, another stupid website set up by some random dude because anyone can buy a url and when i first checked it out i was like damn this is really comprehensive there's a ton of good information on there Mm -hmm. and the more i learned about the site and yourself uh it's a legit resource for people who live in thailand and who want to get permanent residency or citizenship yep so can you tell us a bit about yourself where are you from what do you do and how did you get this beast going okay so it's a long story but the the elevator spiel is i'm i'm australian i was born in australia i grew up in australia um my mum who is a wonderful force of nature happened to be born in bangkok so she's a thai citizen so i grew up um well i didn't grow up with dual nationality but somewhere in my 20s thailand changed their laws and i got a thai passport um, so I, even though I grew up speaking Thai, I studied at university, I ended up getting a Thai, Thai passport early in my 20s. Um, and the adventure that, that many of us and many of your listeners go on, I went on as well. So in my mid-20s, I, I ended up coming to Thailand and I was extremely fortunate that I had the Thai passport yeah. um, and expecting just to stay a year or two and... 20 years later, I'm still here. Join the club, dude. There's a lot of us around. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So to answer your question about how the website came about, um, I originally just wanted to share my experiences as a dual citizen, um, some of the ins and outs, because the internet is a wonderful resource, but uh, you go down a lot of rabbit holes and there's a lot of misinformation out there. So just trying to find and understand what actually my rights were as a dual citizen I, I, I needed actually just to research it and actually just have my own experiences with, with it. Um, so that's been happening for 10 or 15 years. Um, about 2008, 2009, I actually applied for Thai citizenship for my wife. My wife's a New Zealand citizen um, right. and she's been here as long as I have. We met here um, and we were just sick of going down to Chang Watanat every year putting the same paperwork in every year and having a, an immigration official go, oh, gotcha. Yeah. Oh, you need this one document. For yeah. Me, so. And um, so I wanted to know how to get Thai citizenship for my wife. And so I went online like most people did. And um, if you go online, there's a lot of websites around about Thailand. Um, and if you go in, you'll see some random comment from some guy who will say, my wife's brother's cousin is a deputy police officer in Nakhon, nowhere. And he says, you need to be a multimillionaire earning $20,000 a month right. and best friends with the prime minister to get Thai citizenship. Right. And I thought, no, that's not right. So I actually went to research it. I went down to police special branch and found out it's actually much easier than that um, for both men and women who want to apply for Thai citizenship. You don't need to be anything special. 
and it only costs 5,000 baht to apply for if you qualify. Yeah. Now, let's get this out of the way first. Um, a lot of people assume that you need permanent residency first before you get Thai citizenship. Not necessarily true. You can jump directly to Thai citizenship, mm -hmm. but you need to meet a ton of qualifications, one of which is being married to a Thai citizen. Mm -hmm. uh, the other is having a unbroken three-year visa, mm -hmm. business visa, and uh, you have to be paying tax mm -hmm. and have proof of that, mm -hmm. and a, a stack of papers about three inches tall. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't need permanent residency first, but that's the route a lot of people go. Mm -hmm. So is, is that more popular is that easier to go that route or is it is it just as easy to jump straight to citizenship if you're married to a thai person so long story short um it used to be the case that everyone needed to go through the step of permanent residency and hold that for five years okay. while working and then you, you're eligible for citizenship um about 2008 or 2010 from memory they changed the law because um it that always made it easier for foreign women married to a thai man to get citizenship, they didn't have to go through permanent residency, but they made it so that if you're a foreign husband married to a Thai spouse, you can jump permanent residency now and get um, and, and, and apply for Thai citizenship. You're exactly right that you need to be working for three years in the lead up to your application. Your marriage obviously needs to be genuine um, and you need to have various income thresholds met. And if you're married, that's 40,000 baht a month paying tax on that for three years straight um, from a Thai employer. But that's the basic threshold that, that you need to meet. There's a, there's, a, there's a bunch of other things that will add to your credentials of, 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 um, of qualifying for Thai citizenship. Um, it's based on a point scoring system. Right. So you can, there's a hundred points available and you need to get 50 points out of a hundred. Just like being back in high school, right? It's you need being to, back in the high minimum school. threshold is 50%. The nice thing is that you only need 50, 50 points right. to get this. So you don't need to be an A plus student. And it's on a, it's on a, on a scale too. Like um, if you have uh, a high school diploma, yep. you get uh, one point. For, yep. in, for instance, if you have uh, a bachelor's degree, you get two points. Mm. If you have a master's degree, you get three points. Yep. If you have a PhD, you get five points. It's, yeah, it's, stuff it's, like it's that. A, it's stuff like that. So you're actually more generous than that. So if you get a PhD, I think you get the 10 points. If you've got a bachelor's, you get seven or eight points Okay. Um, based on your age. So if you're between 40 and 50, you get the maximum 10 points just by being 40 and between 40 and 50. Right. Um, if you earn a certain level of income, so at, if you're married, it's 40,000 baht, you'll get um, the base amount of points for that. But if you earn more than that, you'll get more points. Right. Um, and then level of education, amount of work experience, and one or two things like Thai language skills. So the nice thing about being married is that you actually don't have to, it's not necessary that you speak Thai to get Thai citizenship. Now, everyone says, oh, you need to be fluent. You need to read and write Thai. If you Sing go, the national anthem and, and all that stuff. If you go down that rabbit hole of the website, you'll see, no, you need to be fluent in Thai, learn, no, need to know how to read and write it. That's actually not true. What you are allocated are points so for your Thai skills. So if your Thai is not very good, and I know a bunch of people who applied for Thai citizenship have got it, whose Thai is next to non-existent. Really? My Thai is moderate to decent yeah. depending on the situation but if you can talk about yourself for five minutes in thai you will get points for that if you can read the questions that they ask you in thai you'll get points for that but if you can't speak thai very well or you don't read or write your other qualifications your, you know your work experience your age your degrees they actually might just push you over the 50 percent the 50 point line anyway already already right. so, okay. so the other stuff's just your sugar on top right. um it's always nice to be able to speak thai and they 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 will allocate points for it but it's not compulsory mm -hmm. now having said that that's if you're married if you're not married you have to still go via the permanent residency route hold that for five years and in the last three years be working full-time oh working in the three years in the lead up to your application and then in and then you apply for it and if you are coming via the permanent residency route you will need to be able to have to sing the national anthem uh -huh. and the royal anthem and, and and sing it to 
a, a committee of about 17 people. Yeah. So 17 to, to 30 people who, who turn up for the final interview. It's probably good to know those anyway. Yeah. A friend of mine uh, got citizenship a few years ago and he said the final interview was, was really trippy mm -hmm. because it was like, he said it was almost like a game show. Like he was there with his wife and his son and the guy, uh, he had to say, okay, stand behind this wall. And the guy got on the microphone and said, our next uh, applicant is Joe Smith. And last year he paid X million baht in taxes. And he does this and this. His wife's name is blah. His son's name is blah. Everyone, welcome Joe Smith. And he came out from behind the thing. Yep. And it was like, yep. the only thing that was missing was an audience cheering for him yep. or something. So um, when my wife went through the process, um, and, and it was exactly the same. We had a photo taken. We were brought into a big um, meeting room. Um, big round sort of horseshoe desk. Um, everyone's got their little microphone in front of them. Uh, they asked my wife two or three questions about her. Um, they asked me a lot more questions. And then, um, and and my, my life history was on show for them. Now, th this is actually another point that I'd like to make to your listeners as well. Um, the the, the rules are in some ways quite sexist and people will observe that they'll say, oh, it's very much easier for a foreign woman married to a Thai man mm. to get citizenship. It is, but you have to understand the rules are focused on the husband in both cases. So when my wife applied, it wasn't about her application. It was all about me. So my income, my history, my really? background. And I was questioned more than my wife was in that. So if understandably most people going for Thai citizenship, citizenship are probably going to be foreign males married to a Thai wife, it's all going to be about you. So you need to be able to talk about yourself. They're going to want to understand your history in, 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 in this. But you don't have to be anyone special. I'm not anyone special. I don't have any special connections that can get me, right. you know, connections to the minister or anything <laughs> like that. Um, I just earned an average income like most people who actually apply for Thai system. They work for a company here. They have an income. They've been here a few years. They get the right amount of points and yeah. you get it. Yeah. Just takes a while. Takes a while. I think three, three to five years. So it depends on the government of the day. Now, the one thing I want to stress is like, the the paperwork is always the same. The paperwork is always actually as straightforward as you can get dealing with a Thai bureaucracy. They give you a list of things that you need. Um, and the list is, you know, they'll give you a piece of paper or you can have a look at my website um, of what you need. But you need to collect all those documents. Right. Um, once you collect those documents, it goes in and they'll do an initial interview at the police special branch, which is across the road from Central World. And they'll they'll ask you questions and that, that will be the formal application. Um, but once it's done, it, it just goes into a process run by the Ministry of Interior. And currently it's about a three year from start to end. So from the, when you apply to when you actually get um, a blue tie ID card, at the moment it runs about three years. Now, I don't want to get political at all, but for some reason, the military government's actually pretty good. With I've, I've heard that they have sped things up. They, they've, they, they yeah. cleared backlogs. They did a lot of things. Um, and it tends to be civilian governments which sort of drag their feet. And what happens with a civilian government is they're a lot more risk averse than ministers. And they will wait till their last day. The interior minister will literally wait till his last day as interior minister and sign off like like pardons, like like presidential pardons, but the opposite, <laughs> and sign all the documents on the last day of of, of his or her um, uh, ministerial tenure, and that that creates a lot of lumpiness and backlog. But mm. the military government, they tend to be, and I'm not trying to advocate one way or the other for them. It just tends to happen that way with a military government. It's a three year it's a three year process. So oh, it's amazing what you can get done when you have a gun in your hand. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, it's, uh, I think it's just a bit of military efficiency as well, but they've regularized the process. And, and one of the things that you, you ask why I did the website as well, um, you know, I've been here 20 years on and off, uh, mostly on. I've seen plenty of people who uh, qualify for it and they go, I'll do it next year. I'll do it next year. I'll, I, I just I can't be bothered doing the paperwork. And then life gets in the way then they lose their job. And so if you lose your job and you don't have seamless transition from one work permit to the next, that three-year clock that you need to have before you apply resets. So it gets pushed back. Um, last year, 
2020, the world turned upside down. Plenty of people lost their jobs. Plenty of people who've been here for for decades or more. Mm -hmm. They're all of a sudden ineligible. Right. They got to start from zero. Starting from zero, which is really like a shame because these people have lived and worked in Thailand. They contribute to the country. They qualify otherwise. It's not a mystery how you qualify. Um, And they they just lose eligibility and that's that's quite sad. So putting together the website was just another way of just sort of putting it all out there. This is how you do it. This is how you can do it yourself. Right. And try and strip away a lot of the mystery around around why how you can get Thai citizenship. So in your experience dealing with a lot of these police officers and the bureaucratic system and the people that are swimming in it, can you explain to me the mindset of the Thai bureaucrat? Like when you walk into Special Branch, which is just a little office mm-hmm. at the back of the police station yep. down by Central World, when you walk in there, what are they thinking? What, what's And generally speaking, what are they thinking as you move through the process? Mm. Is this something they want to encourage? Are they happy to be doing this? Uh, do you get like, you know, jerks and nice people and... Um, is there is there is there like anything consistent throughout or mm. so just as a bit of background probably just to preface this question that that I forgot to add in the beginning my first job here when I came out here in in the early 2000s I worked for the Thai government for 3 or 4 years uh-huh. I worked at the Ministry of Finance um, as an advisor a very junior advisor but nonetheless I deal with a gov- I dealt with the government that entire time and what I do now in my day job requires me from time to time to speak to the Thai government in dealing with the special branch police, and people will not believe me when I say this, they are generally the most friendliest and helpful civil servants you will ever, ever come across. Wow. So their mindset is very much you either qualify or you don't, and they'll take you through what you need to qualify, and which we've sort of semi-covered earlier on, and they'll take you through the documents that you need and explain it to you. And it's very much just a, a, a checkbox process after that. If you have all the little pieces of paper that that allow you to qualify, um, you know, and th- sometimes there's some curly ones. Um, people have had inconsistent tax returns, which I've heard about, or they've had an unfortunate gap in their work permit or something. They'll, they'll let you know and go, you might need to come back next year. Yeah. Um, but they're very friendly, very helpful. And they will want, my experience is they will want to try and get you over the line with it. Um, if it's clear that you're not, they'll, they'll let you know pretty quickly. Well, I have some insight into that, actually, and I haven't talked about this on the show before, but um, I actually tried to apply for citizenship a few years ago. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to get into too many details, but um, basically the, I got all the paperwork together, which was a, a chore in itself. And I went down there uh, and the guy basically looked it over and he said, yeah, this all looks good, but there's one thing here that is not complete. And if you want to, I will send this through. I'll take your money and mm-hmm. I'll apply. But I'm telling you now, it probably will get kicked back. Yeah. It will probably be rejected. And he's like, it's up to you. But mm-hmm. this is what I'm telling you. And, and you know, so we didn't do it. Mm. And I'm po- biding my time until I can yeah. do it again. So the police, the special branch police, that's the very first step. They vet the documents and it's their job to send it on to the Ministry of Interior. And if you ask about the mindset of a Thai civil servant, they actually don't want to get into trouble with sending the incomplete or wrong paperwork. Um, in, in Thai, one of the things that you'll hear a civil servant say is like, it's like, it's, it's beautiful papers. <laughs> um, um, but they, they need to be ticking all the boxes because the last thing the special branch policeman will want is a ministry of interior sending back too many incomplete or to their mind incomplete applications. So they need to be consistent. They need to be, what the Ministry of Interior requires. But if that's the case, it it just, you go onto a conveyor belt after that. So your application heads off to the Ministry of Interior for that two to three year window where you get tapped on the shoulder for an interview once or twice, but it's a pretty painless situation after that. Yeah. Now, one of the things that that I that I think is 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 kind of a controversial topic is uh, when you According to what I've heard, when you get Thai citizenship, you are required to give up your native-born citizenship. Mm-hmm. They have to do this after you get your Thai citizenship mm-hmm. because they can't make you do it before mm-hmm. because then most people would become stateless, stateless people, which is against several UN charters mm-hmm. as far as I understand. <laughs> um, so what's what's the deal on that? Do you have to do that? Because I know a lot of people 
who have dual citizenship. Mm -hmm. So I I will preface this again. I'm not a lawyer, um, (laughs) but I am an economist and I do a lot of research. This is not the official opinion of the Bangkok podcast. Please consult a lawyer for legal representation. (laughs) And uh, my my time in uh, government makes me pretty good at reading what's called Pasaratakan, which is basically Thai civil service speak and documentation. (laughs) Um, So I've done a lot of digging and a lot of research. Um, so the intention to renounce your Thai citizenship is a, is an interesting thing. Um, before I start, let me back up a bit and just sort of outline that since 1992, um, Thai legislation hasn't said anything about whether dual citizenship is illegal or not. Prior to that point, um, it, it explicitly was, but since 1992, that's changed. Going back to your question about the intention to renounce letter, um, basically what it is is a letter that you draft yourself stating that when I am granted Thai citizenship, I intend to renounce my foreign citizenship. And that letter needs to be taken to your embassy to be stamped as an official acknowledgement. And when you have that stamp, you bring it back and put it in your application pack for, for your Thai citizenship application. The first thing to realise is that isn't a formal process on behalf of most countries. Um, Most countries will require you to go through a a quite formal process to renounce. So, for instance, Australia requires you to fill in in an extensive form. Uh, It requires you to show that you're not going to be stateless as a result of the renunciation and it requires you to pay a fee of a couple of hundred dollars. The British process is, um, is, is pretty much the same where you you pay a couple hundred pounds instead, and the British and, and the U.S. system uh, uh, system to renounce is actually even more convoluted, where you need to clear you know your tax obligations to the U.S. and and a few other things before they let you renounce your U.S. citizenship. So the letter to the intention to renounce letter that that's required by police special branch during your application is has has no legal effect in your home country. And then, uh, a number of years ago, a friend of mine who was living in Hong Kong who mm. had dual citizenship with Italy, mm. he wanted to give up his, yeah. citi- his his American citizenship and he tried to do it in Hong Kong, but there were so many people trying to do it there. They said, go to Bangkok and do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, here. And, and <laughs> so fast forward and you've got your Thai citizenship now. Um, are you then at that point made to give up your foreign citizenship? Um, no is, is a basic answer. No one who's been through the process as far as I've known, as far as I've seen, has had special branch or the government come after them with um, a follow-up request to show evidence that they've given up their foreign citizenship. Um, What special branch do do, and it's more of a tip than actually anything, is that that you go and uh, change the registrations that you have that, that might state that you're a foreign national. So, for instance, if you've got bank accounts saying that you're a foreign national, you change that to Thai. Driver's license, maybe pro- uh, you know, condo, property, ship, property ownership, things like that, to, to go and change those type of things to reflect that, that you're a Thai citizen, to, to, to reflect that you're a Thai citizen now. And, and that's based on part of the legislation which says that people who have naturalised as Thai can have their foreign citizenship taken away from them if they show use of that foreign citizenship. But um, it, that's not just merely holding the act of holding a foreign passport. Um, it actually actually has to be more active than that. Um, you can go have a look at the Royal Gazette as well. Um, and the Royal Gazette states very clearly why people lose their Thai citizenship. And the only losses have been through voluntary renunciations of Thai citizenship. It's not as if the government's gone after people subsequently and, and taken citizenship away from anyone. Um, we'd know that that would be published in the Royal Gazette. Um, so the long and the short of it is that as long as you use your Thai passport to enter and leave Thailand, and don't register your, yourself on any pieces of paper or anything as a foreign national within Thailand, then then you're staying on the right side of the law. There just, there just hasn't been any evidence to show that that citizenship is taken away um, following having it been granted. It's my understanding that there's not a lot of coordination between like, you know, my, for instance, my Canadian embassy and the, the, the Thai citizenship 
people. No. It's, it's not like they have lunch together and, you know, make sure no. that they're working on the same page. They're it, completely separate. It, even to the extent that, a, you know, a random nationality, and I can't think of one off the top of my head, but there, I, I've, I've seen it. They will go to their home embassy and go, oh, look, I need this letter signed or witnessed by you that I'm I'm intending to give up the citizenship. And the home embassy has no idea about it. And they go, well, this isn't our process. And it's like, we, we don't need to go down your official process. I just need this form signed for the purposes of the Thai, of the Thai special branch. And so there's a little bit of toing and froing and it's not, con- that's the one bit of the process that's probably not consistent across the board for anyone. Right, mm-hmm. right. Now, the purpose of your site is, uh, there, I mean, there's, there's, it's, a, it's a really great site and many kudos to you for setting it up. It's, it's really fantastic. I urge everyone to check it out who's interested in this kind of stuff because there's, there's a ton of really good information on there. Um, one of the things that the website says is it will allow you to do this process without a lawyer. Mm. And that's sort of a lot of what a lot of people, including myself, is sort of like the default position is, oh, I got to hire mm. a lawyer, which can cost anywhere between 100 to 200 to 500 a thousand baht and more depending on you know who you are who you talk to and what you're wanting mm. so um your your contention is that you absolutely don't need a lawyer for this i i have no i have no doubt that you don't need a lawyer for this i just to in case of your listeners are lawyers i i like lawyers i work with them one of Lawyer, my best friends is a lawyer lawyers are very valuable people <laughs> um no genuinely they are and, and and a good lawyer is worth their weight in gold um the process is very checkbox um all the documentation needs to come from you anyway. There's nothing a lawyer can get for you um, that you can't get yourself. Um, and most of the documentation you'll actually have yourself on you. Um, police special branch are very happy to vet your documents. You can go down before you apply. They're, they actually want you to go down a couple of times to recheck and recheck the documents. And they'll be, and, that, and they're very friendly and, and very easy that way. So, They'll be doing that checking for you. Lawyer's not going to do it for you. And the final thing, there's no application form. So lawyers tend to, um, uh, you know, say, oh, we'll do the application form, fill it in. The, the actual police special branch fill in the, doc- the documentation to apply for you. So there's actually nothing that you need to do apart from get the documents. Now, I understand people are busy. I understand people work full time. And that time is an issue. If you have a good secretary um, if you have someone who's an assistant, get them to help you maybe. Um, if you don't have that, just get someone who's a good Thai speaker to liaise with P- P- police special branch, but you don't really need a lawyer. And as you say, that I, I can't see any value in someone charging. I've heard up to 500,000 a million baht sometimes for lawyers yeah, charging. I don't see any value in someone there's no there's no million baht value in someone just lining up some documents that you mostly have in your drawers at home for for this <laughs> process. <laughs> um, the website is a bit like a choose your own adventure. Okay. Um, if you remember those books from growing up as Classic. a kid. Classic, yeah, I love them. So you start off with how do I get Thai citizenship, which is um, one of the first things you'll see on my page. And then there'll be like, oh, I can go down this route, go down that route, go down this route, PR married to a Thai wife, married to a Thai husband, and you click in and then you go into that link and then there'll be like the documents you need depending on the route that you're going down. So there's lists of documents that you'll need. There's lists of, um, the, there's, a, there's, a, there's a page on the point scoring system. There's a page on how you get your yellow to be unbarn, which is one of the things that you need to kick off the process, which probably is the biggest headache of the entire process that people need. I, I got that a few years ago, the house registration. Yeah. And it's 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 half a day sitting in an office waiting for papers to be signed out. It sucks, but yeah. it's not difficult. It's not difficult. Um, it, to be fair, it can be difficult depending on which district office you go to. Some people, some offices don't have a clue how to process it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing that a lot of foreigners find maddening, I think, is it is it just the inconsistency. Like you go to this office and mm. they say, you absolutely can't do this thing. And yeah. then you go to another office and mm. they say, oh, sure, we do that all yeah. the time. So that, that's with the yellow to be I want to stress that with the citizenship stuff, it's pretty like consistent. Talking about the to be and this is probably one thing that if you've got people and um, listeners in the provinces um, interested in doing this, um, under the requirements, you have to apply via the police special branch in the province that you're registered in. Unfortunately, as good as the police special branch people in Bangkok are, most of them in the countryside won't have a clue about this right. process. 
So if you are interested in going down this path, one of the things that you need to do is find a friend or your spouse's friend and move your house registration to Bangkok so you're eligible to, to apply via Bangkok. Special Branch know this. They're very happy um, for people to be Bangkok residents in, in name only. Oh. Um, it's not the end of the world, actually. It's probably the most helpful thing. I, I would suspect Chiang Mai, maybe Phuket um, are two places where you might get away from applying um, via the local special branch there. But if you're in one of the more regional provinces, I would strongly suggest removing your house registration to Bangkok and applying via there. Because if you manage to get your application in, there's a high likelihood it will go nowhere and sit on someone's desk because they're, they're not really clued up on how to do it. Right. So say I follow the website and uh, and I go through the process. Three years later, I get my citizenship. Mm-hmm. Greg is a Thai citizen. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I mean, kapum kap. Can I vote? Can I own land? Am I a full citizen under the Thai law? So there's mostly yes. There's a couple of things that you cannot do. You'll be happy to know you can't be conscripted yeah, <laughs> as, a Thai, good. as a newly minted Thai male. If you, fat, you, middle-aged old man, you won't yeah, be, what am I you do won't be conscripted. <laughs> um, you unfortunately can't vote until five years after, until the fifth year after holding Thai citizenship. Um, so my wife got her Thai citizenship in 2015. So next Bangkok elections, hopefully we'll get something in the mail saying she can vote now. Um, and, but you can own land. You're in every other respect, a full Thai citizen. Um, and you know, all you need to do is cancel the visa in your Canadian passport and get the new Thai passport and and you're done and dusted. And I mean, this, this is a thing as, as frustrating and sometimes hard as having to navigate the paperwork as a foreigner here is once you're through the other side having a thai id card makes life so much simpler that's what i say i, I want to get thai citizenship because when slash if i am ever able to retire mm. i want to say goodbye on my last day of work and i want to go home and play video games i don't want to worry about mm. retirement visas and this much money in the bank and mm. jumping through this hoop and going up to this cheng wat kind of thing mm. i just want to go home and it, and just chill out. <laughs> I, 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 I swear to God, having a Thai ID card living in Thailand is just facilitates everything so much easier. You know, your more libertarian bent listeners might not like the idea of a central database with all your details on it, but for my <laughs> lo- for my liking, it actually makes life a lot easier. <laughs> and I remember uh, a couple of years ago when I got my digital work permit, mm. um, whipping that out at banks and government offices would be like, whoa, mm. what is this? Mm. You know, are you trying to scam us? Um, what's what's the reaction? I, I imagine if someone tries to charge me 400 baht to get into a national park or whatever it is, mm. and I pull out my Thai ID card. Uh, so we, 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 I mean, my wife is a New Zealander. She is blonde haired, blue eyed. My kids are blonde haired and blue eyed. They have Thai passports too, even though they didn't naturalize, they were born as Thai citizens. Um, the Firstly, I will say you're actually not as special as you think you are. <laughs> um, plen- you sound like my mother. Plenty of people actually get it these days, um, contrary to, to what a lot of people will tell you. Mostly they're hiding in plain sight in front of you. Um, and so you won't know they're Thai citizens until you might bump into them at the passport lane at the airport one day when we're able to fly again. <laughs> um, so, and and- uh, it's pretty standard now that people, Thai officials will actually come across um, Westerners in particular, but there's plenty of Chinese and Indians, um, uh, Cambodians, Laotians, um, Taiwanese are, are, a big, are a big group. But if you're talking about Westerners, there's plenty of Westerners about with Thai citizenship these days. Um, and it's the reaction that you get is most people actually quite chuffed that you, you've gone to the effort of getting Thai citizens. They give you the universal thumbs up. Yeah. My, we went to a national park just over the Christmas holidays and, you know, pulled out, whipped out the Thai ID for my wife and everyone looked at it admiringly and sort of charged a 40 baht and we're in. And, nice. You know, so I, I, it, it's never been, no, this is fake. It's never been, how did you get this? It's kind of like, oh, this is nice. Oh, cool. Yeah. So I, I, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised by the official reaction to, to having a Thai, Thai, Thai ID card. Nice. 
All right. Well, uh, as we're wrapping up here, let's get into some patron questions. Our $5 patrons get a heads up for guests in advance, and they can send us in a question if they have something to ask. And we have a question here from our buddy, Kevin. He says, what would you need to do to get PR if you are an artist and thus don't have a quote unquote job, but do have an income? This is something that I experienced years ago when I was a freelance journalist, Mm -hmm. because I tried to get a credit card here. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is a long time ago when I didn't have a credit card and couldn't ruin my life with my own folly. But um, they wouldn't give me one because I had no income. Mm -hmm. I was like, I have income. I am a freelance journalist. Mm -hmm. I'm a writer. I write a ton of stuff. Mm -hmm. Here's my bank account. Mm -hmm. And they're like, no that doesn't qualify as income, quote mm. unquote, because you don't have a work permit and all mm. this stuff. I mean, I, I had, I was, I was legally working, but mm. I wasn't employed full time by mm. a Thai company. Mm. So if you, if you have one of these sort of jobs that doesn't require you to sit in an office all day mm. um, and sort of make a living in another way, mm. what's the option for getting PR or citizenship? Uh, unfortunately, in that case, um, there's not many options. Um, if you're, the way it's structured for both permanent residency and citizenship, you actually need to be working for a Thai registered company, earning an income from them to the the required threshold and then paying tax on that. So, and having a work permit to reflect that Mm. for the three years. So unless you're in that situation, then, then you don't qualify. Now, there's plenty of people who set up there are businesses here and you know it, it's not easy as it's not as easy as a foreigner to set up a business here because you need the four to one rule for work permits you need mm-hmm. you know minimum capital um registered capital and all of this kind of stuff but if you have a legitimate business there's nothing to stop you setting up a legitimate business and channeling your income through that and actually the authorities would love to actually see that because it's a way of verifying that you can support yourself and and, and live here in thailand and Plenty of people do that via their own businesses and 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 and, and get PR and citizenship that way. Um, they will want to vet your company, and but if it's legit, there's nothing to stop you getting it. But if you're just here on a, 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 some sort of visa where you're you're getting income paid into a foreign bank account, you're not paying tax on it here, and you don't have a work permit, and it's certainly you're not working for a Thai registered company. Unfortunately, there's just no option mm. for you to, to to go down this route, and it's just a legacy of the this the the legislation being written in 1979 or something. So, it's it's a little bit antiquated. Sorry, Kevin. I guess there's no more. Uh, yeah, sit, no. Like, sitting on the beaches, uh, painting Samui sunsets. Yeah, no. Look, <laughs> I feel I feel bad for people like Kevin. I feel bad for people who are married here, who have been here a long time, and just because of one or two things, they they miss out on it. Or, you know, my even in my situation, my parents have been married for fifty years. My my dad and mum have been married fifty years. My dad, mum was a Thai citizen. My dad's an Australian citizen. He's never going to be eligible to to get Thai citizenship at all or right. permanent residency because he just haven't he doesn't check those boxes so there's a lot of instances where um the the law is i'd argue unfair um but i'd also argue that uh there's actually more options than people realize to get citizenship and they should check it out because i think they'd be pleasantly surprised if they're living and working here that that's actually not a, a as hard a step as they think it is right the special branch police website has some rules out there um that that are on i think they're all in thai though so if you can read and write thai by all means go check out police special branch website and they'll have drop down box of how to get thai nationality for a male or female depending Mm. um and and that's that's the source but i always tell people i've got this website it's great i think you should look at it but the very first thing you'll see i say on the website go down to police special branch and have a chat to them They'll quickly, they're, they're friendly, they're helpful, and they'll quickly give you an estimation of if you're ever going to qualify or not. Hmm. And um, if they, if you need to wait a year or two, they'll they'll let you know that. But if you qualify, they'll be particularly helpful and they're probably the most helpful Thai civil servants I've ever met. It's good to know. Good mm. to know, Chris. Thanks so much, man, for coming on the show and good job with the site. Uh, it's it's a it's a it's a gold mine of information. Very and, welcome. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be taking a very close look at it, and I urge our listeners to look at it too if that's what you want to do. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll see you at the voting booth one day. Maybe. I hope so. Yeah, you and your wife will all vote together. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thanks, man. Bye, mate. Do 
dude, that was a great interview. Obviously, this is something that this is a topic that is near and dear to both of our hearts, since we're both potential citizens uh, someday. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, you know, obviously, he had a lot of things to say. Uh, but I actually am somewhat heartened or or optimistic. He seems to have taken kind of a, uh, or his view of it is that it's kind of bureaucratic. And that if you just dot your eyes and cross your T's and jump through all the hoops and are super patient, that you probably will get citizenship. Is that, is that an accurate summary, would you say? Uh, I was, yeah. If, if you meet all of the conditions clearly and fairly um, and, yeah, and submit your will to the whimsies of <laughs> Thai bureaucracy right. Right. And, and don't flip over tables and kick in doors and get frustrated with it. Then yeah, like you said, it's it's these guys who do this. Like it's really easy as someone who has who has sort of been very close to the process. It's 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 really easy to lose your temper and think like this is ridiculous. There's no reason for this. It doesn't make any sense. Blah 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 blah. And that might all be true, but it doesn't change the fact that these guys, like he said, are just bureaucrats. They're just dudes doing their job, and their job is to make sure all the boxes are ticked. And if they don't right. do that, then they're in trouble. So. Right, right, uh, right. It might seem silly and 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 in and, and not logical, but you have to suppress that when you when you dive into this pool, you know. You know, I could uh, honestly, I could talk about the, you know this issue, uh, you know, for a couple hours, as you and I have talked about it many times. Um, but w- you know, one thing that the, I learned from this interview is uh, the, the, my previous way I explained it is that getting permanent residency was super bureaucratic, super difficult. But if you checked all the boxes, you would end up getting it. But I, the way I used to think about citizenship was that there were many fewer boxes, but it was much more discretionary. Like it was a little bit more. Now, actually, I thought, honestly, I, I, before this interview, I thought of it as much more random and much more arbitrary. But his, the way he describes it is a little bit more the way I think of PR. You know, what he, he's basically, I mean, he, he, of course, didn't say you're guaranteed to get it, but he, he, you know, he basically said it's a bunch of rules and regulations, and it's really almost like a test of your patience and endurance. Right. Yeah. And obviously, there's no guarantee, and some people don't get it, and some people get turned down for right. it for, for, for various reasons. But um, at the end of the day, probably the majority of it is just, like you said, just ticking boxes. And if you tick all the boxes and, and, and why enough, then, you know, it'll probably be all right. I guess it's it's kind of a pick your poison thing because you know a simple application that was easy, but then was arbitrary, you know, that has its advantages because whatever you just pay your money, fill out a couple pages, and then you just roll the dice. But you know, in in a sense, I probably would rather like a I'd rather prefer a lengthier process, which was super annoying, but with a higher certainty that I'm actually going to get it. Mm, interesting. Yeah, so, uh, no, this is interesting. So maybe it's more like PR than I thought. You know, you learn something every day. That's right. Well, if you want to learn more, how about this segue? If you want to learn more, oh, wow. then head to thaicitizenship.com th- because, uh, yeah, Chris has done a really good job of putting putting a lot of information on there. And even if you don't want to get citizenship, it's good just to read because there's a lot of information on there about the rules and the regulations and insights into how these bureaucrats and government organizations think and work. So, uh, yeah, it's a great site. So many thanks to Chris for coming on the show. That's great, man. I, he's he's a guy that I, I have a feeling I'll be talking to in the future. Yeah, right on. All right, let's get into some love, loathe, or live with, where one of us picks a particular aspect of life in Bangkok, which we then discuss and decide if it's something we love about living here, loathe about living here, or have come to accept as something that we just have to learn to live with, no matter how we feel about it. This week, Ed, it is over to you. All right, Greg, I know we've talked about this in general before, uh, but this just happened to me yesterday. Uh, I'm in, uh, uh, I don't want to give too much identifying information, but I'm in uh, uh, a restaurant run by Thai people, and basically they were out of the main ingredient that you would guess that this restaurant would sell. Oh, so you mean like if you go to a restaurant, like a noodle restaurant, and they're like, oh yeah, we're out of noodles, we only have rice. Exactly, exactly. I mean, so obviously no one can love this, but um, do I wonder how you've dealt with this, and do, do, do you... Do you do you think it's any different? To, to, I, I just in my memory, although it's been a long time since I lived back home, I just almost never remember this happening. I mean, never. Yeah, I don't think I do either. Although, I mean, it's probably not a highlight of something that takes up a significant amount of room in my memory box. 
Right. <laughs> but it does well, happen I mean, here a lot. Whether you go to a store and it's like got a display of like headphones, you're like, oh yeah, I want those headphones. Oh, we don't have those. Well, well right, why, why right, are they right. on display? Or, you know, you go to a restaurant. Uh, yeah, I'd like some, you go to a ramen restaurant. Yeah, I'd like ramen. Oh yeah, no ramen today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I mean, it, obviously it doesn't happen every day, but it, it seems like the kind of thing that really should basically never happen. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would have to live with it because what else are they going to do? Close down like... Oh, we had we had some guy come in and they're having a wedding and they bought four hundred packs of ramen. So close down. Yeah, you know it's. It, I mean, you're right. I mean that. Will cover, I, I think. I mean, I'm going to have to say loathe because it's just that as my honest emotional reaction. Um, but I think you're. I mean, clearly you're you're right. I mean, you're being reasonable. I think mostly we're talking about small, you know, small businesses. They have a certain stock and there's they have a certain expectation and then sometimes it gets screwed up. You know. Yeah. And so they just they just don't have like the main thing. <laughs> the the thing is there's probably a sign on the door that says sorry, we're out uh, maybe. of th- stuff today, but it's in Thai and then you and I are so pathetic we can't read Thai. So <laughs> maybe. Again, okay, it's, could, it's another one of those situations where you're like this is stupid, it shouldn't work like this and then you realize like, "Oh, I'm the tool in the situation." <laughs> okay, well that's certainly possible. Um, <laughs> happens to me a lot. And all I can say is I uh, certainly in in the actual situation when it happens, I'm never I, I never explode in public. That's just totally not my style. So I never, I never yell at people and be like, "What?" You know, I'm not like that. But inside, that's what I'm doing. Right, you screaming know, into the inside, void. I'm like, that's right. Inside, I'm like, "Ah, how could you not have this?" <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm sure I look disappointed. You right. know, so it's not like I, it's not like I look happy. Um, you remember that episode of Seinfeld but, where Elaine is is trapped on the subway and she's like just smiling and looking around, but you can hear her internal monologue and she's just like screaming bloody murder at all the people around her. <laughs> It's funny. I think that I think that's a that, I think that happens in Thailand a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah. Not 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 just not just not just expats, but I think Thai people are like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a good one. I'm gonna have to say live with. Um, I, well, you're nice. That's because you're Canadian and I'm American. That's that's why. It is what it is, eh? Uh, it's frustrating. I'm a, I'm, but I'm what are they gonna do? I'm alone. Leave your loathe. All right. All right. All right. That that is a Canadian attitude, no doubt. Fair enough, eh? All right. A final thanks to our patrons who support the show. Patrons get a ton of cool perks. And the warm, fuzzy feeling, knowing that they're helping support the show. Find out more by clicking support on our website. And connect with us online. We're Bangkok Podcast on social media, bangkokpodcast.com on the web, or simply bangkokpodcast at gmail.com. We love hearing from our listeners and always reply to our messages. Yeah, we do. You can also listen to each episode on the YouTube. You can chat with us online or you can reach out to me on Twitter or Instagram where I am BKK Greg. So thanks for listening, everyone. Take it easy out there and we will see you back here next week. Hello. Hello, hello. Test, test, test. Hello, this I'm is. I'm starting great. to put the mic. I've been I've been talking over the mic, uh, which I know is in some ways good practice because it's less puffy. But it it makes my level so low. Too aspirated? Yeah, or whatever. Yeah, whatever the hell you fancy audio engineer types call it. Peter Pecker pick wait, no, Peter Pepper. Sorry. <laughs> Peter Pecker. <laughs> Peter Pecker pipped a bike. <laughs> Peter picked his peckers more like <laughs>